On episode 66 today, we're discussing the ROI of your face. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to The 88 Show. This is the internet's only dental show where we are answering marketing's most important questions because that's what we do, because it's so important that your marketing questions get answered. This is episode 66, I'm your host, Joshua Scott. Uh, glad you're here with us today. We've got the 88 crew behind me. A uh, Bit of a busy week, we're headed out of town on a, on a team trip, visiting some clients, and uh, that's the next few days, uh, what's happening. Uh, look for a current situation to come out of that. I, I know we're, Jay Moore, we got him filming one of those. Uh, so it won't be live when this episode happens, but down the road uh, episode number five current situation look for it that's happening this week uh, but this month we are kicking off our new topic it's April and the the theme or the topic for this month is what is the ROI of your face uh, what is the return on investment of your face it actually started off as a rant on one of our current situations when i was with jay moore in florida it looks good and we probably need it but what's what's the roi of a logo and i was like what's the roi of a logo like what's the roi of your face it's literally almost becoming like an addiction like a math and addiction. so the story behind this was one day i was just kind of sorting through Instagram and saw a friend of mine who's a designer and uh, he had these this really cool business card and kind of like took a picture of it and posted it on Instagram and I was like man that business card looks awesome it looks amazing and it was for a dental practice and so I, I, I double tap on it because I like it but as soon as I did I realized oh my gosh like I have pitched this dental practice a project a few months before he designed these cards and all of a sudden it, it hits me, right? Uh, this was a dental practice I had sat down with and they were getting ready to expand into their second location. And it's that, that conversation of, we need to define the brand. Uh, we, we need to create a logo. We need to get new photography. The website needs updated. Like you're getting ready to expand in the multiple areas. The messaging here needs to be crystal clear before we get too far out. And I remember this dentist called me and he said, Josh, I, I, I think you're a great guy, but this is entirely too expensive. And he said, you know, I, I know a logo and photography and all that stuff is important, but it feels very fluffy, feels very probably sexy. And, and he says to me, he says, what is the ROI of a logo anyway? And I remember on, on the phone almost wanting to probably come out of my skin on that question because it was like, what is the ROI of a logo? Like, what's the return on his investment for a logo? It's almost like asking, what is the return on investment for your face, right? I mean, your face makes you human and it's that logo that makes your business human to everybody else that sees it. It communicates intentionality, it communicates brand, it communicates story, it communicates that there are people there that just care. So like, how do you even answer that? What's the return on investment for a good logo? I mean, goodness, it, it, regardless of what we even charge or what you pay for it, it's years of compounded return to you and your business. You know, and, and he kind of was pushing back on the photography and you know, it's like, what's, what's the ROI on photography? I mean, I don't know, what's the ROI on a healthcare business that um, portrays and shows compassion and empathy through photography, through photos? I don't know. So, you know, I, I remember at the end of that phone call just feeling like we are talking, we're worlds apart. We're almost talking different languages. And probably at the end of the day, this, it wasn't a good fit for us and, and our strategy with how we um, approach marketing overall. And so, but it was a conversation that was, that started a, a interesting discussion on what is the return on investment on branding? I mean, what is it? What, what is the ROI of a logo? What is the ROI of photography? Those are really great questions. And in this month, the first episode for April, we are going to discuss the difference between direct response marketing 
and branding, brand marketing. And is one better than the other? Should we lean one way more than the other? Because brand is really hard to define that return on investment. I mean, you know, granted. So we're gonna talk about that. Direct response, we spend $1,000 there, we see the data, we see the clicks, we can tell this was good, this wasn't good, et cetera. And so uh, today we're talking about the difference between the two. Uh, next episode, episode 67, we're gonna talk about how dental branding is broken. And that's gonna be a good episode. I'm actually excited about it because I just wanna be out there with it and just state the, the obvious. Dental branding on the whole is broken and here's what we can do to fix it. And so today's episode, let's look at a few differences between branding and direct response. All right, so let's take a minute and talk about the difference between direct response and brand. And so number one is brand always beats direct response. And so that's the first rule, write that down because it never fails. Brand will always beat direct response. And here's what I mean, let's, let's take Coke for example, okay? If we wanted to compete with Coke and create a product, a soda, to compete with that, we could get into the science about creating a better cola. Uh, I mean, we, we could get into like focus groups and test uh, packaging and bless you. <laughs> he's, he's like. <laughs> we actually create a better soda. I mean, it's better in every sense of the word. I mean, it's, it's gluten-free, it's vegan, it's non-GMO, it's all these things. The problem is we put this up against Coke and who wins that competition? It's Coke. I mean, Coke wins that every day and it's because of the billions of dollars they have put behind their brand in advertising their brand and, and the, the strength of their name recognition. And so when it comes down to it, all the biggest companies in the world are brand companies. They market their brand. I mean, from Apple to you know Coke and Disney and, and all the, the companies that we know that are General Electric, it's all brand marketing, okay? And so here's how these guys approach it. And it's a very, two, uh, it's a very simple two-step process. Uh, and if we're not careful, we will miss it because it's so simplistic. But like, let's go back to Coke, for example, again. In 2014, they spent 7% of their revenue on marketing. In that year, it turned out to be $3.5 billion that they just spent on marketing, right? So every year they set aside their 7%. So that's step number one. Step number two, they decide where to spend it. So do they wanna do Super Bowl advertising? You know, let's set aside 25 million to get four spots and develop some Super Bowl commercials. That's what they do. We got 3.5 billion, here's how we wanna spend it. What I guarantee you Coke is not doing is sitting there during the Super Bowl, watching their ads and then watching the analytics, hoping that people buy Coke because if they don't, the company's gonna go under. <laughs> That's not the game they play. They literally know we're gonna spend three and a half billion a year on marketing. We do that, it strengthens the brand and we maintain our brand dominance. All right, and number two is direct response is a drug. Direct response is a drug. And here's what I mean by that. It, it, it's probably in a little dose, it's fine to feel good. Uh, but when you start choosing feeling good over going to the gym and putting in the work, then it becomes a problem. And, and part of this is, is just the nature of digital marketing uh, today in 2017. You know, we, between Facebook ads, Google AdWords, we're getting so much data and analytics that it's fun. It, it's fun to tie those results to it. You know, we can spend $500 on Facebook and we get six phone calls and that turns into four new patients. So we look at that and go, well, that was $125 a new patient. That's good, let's keep playing that. So can we up it to a thousand and get eight new patients? And so it becomes this game where we get very predictable results. Um, at the end of the day, we can probably make everything very direct response. The question is, in dentistry, should it be direct response? Should a service-based industry be completely direct response? And see, I think it's very short-sighted. I think when everything, when you invest all your marketing budget into direct response tactics, which are more sales-based, let's, let's invest here and get sales, and we ignore the long-term brand, then it's short-sighted. And we open ourselves up to immediate competition that wants to come in, all they gotta do is either outspend us on Google or create better ads on Facebook. 
I mean, that's it. And they start capturing our new patient flow. And so in the end, if all we are a direct response, some competitor comes in, knocks us off. But if we've got brand, if we've invested in brand, now we're taking like chunks of, of real estate, of equity online in the digital world. And that becomes way harder for people to take away from us. And so, so direct response, very short-sighted, like a drug brand. It's the long-term hard work, man, of just making it happen. All right, and number three is the creative is the variable. And here's what I mean by that. Uh, direct response is the channel, it's the distribution. You take Google AdWords or Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or whatever that channel is, that's the direct response. It's, it's the, the, the channel that that response is coming through, but it's really the creative that's the variable. And so follow me on this for a second. Go, take Google AdWords, very little brand, lots of direct response. I mean, everybody gets the same amount of blue letters. Um, you can get a little creative with the copy, but even there it's become very formulaic and like what go, needs to go in there, what should go in there, what's relevant, because you've got so little to work with. And so on one end of the spectrum over here, Google AdWords, very direct response, not much brand to it at all. Move to Facebook. Facebook's definitely got a lot more brand to it. Now we can use images. And so now we're, we're connecting with people on a visual level. Those images can be uh, stock photography. They can be custom photography. Uh, we can now connect with people in that way. It's still cool because it has some direct response tied to it. We, we can get real good at like what our Facebook ads are scoring, but sometimes the temptation is if they're not scoring well or not performing well, maybe we pull them. And, and I see this with people that go, Facebook doesn't work as well as Google AdWords, so we want to be in Google AdWords. And I'm like, that's fine and that may be true. It doesn't mean we should pull out of Facebook necessarily, okay? Move a little bit more this way, we've got Instagram. Instagram is almost entirely brand. Uh, in fact, it's very little direct response because the platform isn't meant for that. It's not native. Direct response is not native to Instagram. We're not getting clicks and conversions necessarily. And so, you know, we've had clients get into Instagram and within the first six months or a year, we're probably just disappointed overall with the results because the data just doesn't translate. At the end of the day, when we see a month of $500 spent on Instagram and we've got you know two clicks, it's a little disappointing. Does that mean the, the ads weren't valued? No, not at all. It's just a branded play. And then if we go all the way down the other side, man, you, you, know, you got your Snapchats and your Instagram stories and now Facebook has their own uh, version of that. And so we have these areas where a lot of practices are so hesitant to get into an area like Snapchat because there's literally no direct response. I mean, it's not built into the platform at all. You're not clicking on anything that's going to analytics, that's showing uh, what your ads did. And so we're hesitant to spend real money in that place because we can't tie it back to the return that we're getting on the investment. And so at the end of the day, the creative is the variable. And look, I know that with you know, your, your audience size, your data, your reach is sexy, but it's the depth that's everything. It's the brand, it's the engagement, it's the connection that becomes everything. All right, guys, well, that wraps up episode 66, talking about the difference, just some of my thoughts, observations on the difference between brand and direct response. Uh, I don't think it's a game of either or, I think it's literally a game of both and. My advice is don't get so caught up in that little hit of the direct response that we lose sight of brand and we get short-sighted on what's the ROI of my logo or photography or a video or blog articles, those types of things that we do that we just can't tie the clicks and the numbers back to all the time. And so uh, question of the episode for episode 66, uh, where does your marketing budget lean? Does it lean more towards brand? Does it lean more towards direct response? Uh, and which do you prefer? And I'll bet a lot of people out there prefer the direct response. We like seeing the numbers, we like seeing the clicks. So guys, that wraps it up. Thanks so much for being here. Next episode, episode 67, don't forget about that one. We're gonna talk about how dental branding is broken and what we can do to fix it. And then also this month's article, that link is down below. What's the ROI of your face? That's it. Oh, best place to follow me, Instagram. Jay Moore is gonna put it right here. Uh, it's gonna be fresh and tight, clean, fresh and clean, clean and tight. 
and uh, we will see you next episode.